Hello, and welcome to this short video where we'll look at examples of brochures and how they do or don't correspond to the ADA format in your textbook. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we'll review really quickly what the brochure looks like specifically as an ADA document with six panels. So this is um, figure 13.1 from your textbook. And if you'll notice here, just in review, let's look at how the brochure actually comes together because it can be a little confusing how you fold it and what it all looks like when you're printing front to back. So in your brochure, this one right here, the one to the very far right is your front panel. This is where you want to gather attention. You'll have your company logo, some sort of striking graphic um, where your company is and says exactly what the company is offering. So there's no confusion as to what type of brochure someone's picking up. And then from here, we dip down. The second panel is actually the farthest panel to the left in the second part of the template. So this is where we start to develop interest, right? Because in ADA, we have attention, interest, desire, and action. So if we're looking here in the interest, this is where you first start to reveal the concrete and specific details about your product or service supported by a dynamic layout and graphics. So that is typically the second panel. The third panel is interest. This is where you continue to build interest in your service or product by providing more details, including price if appropriate. Then the fourth panel we have here will also continue just to build on interest and dip a little bit into the desire piece. So when generating interest, again, appealing to how good your customer will feel after using your product and services. So we're using a little bit of that pathos that we talked about earlier in the course and also look at benefits and answering any possible objections people might have to your product or service. Fifth panel, we continue to build on desire, just maybe in a little bit of a different way. Um, this could be testimonials from customers, uh, biographies of company founders, and possibly your mission statement if it hasn't already been mentioned. And then the sixth panel is the back of the brochure, and that's really your call to action, your contact details, your map. If you're going to use coupons or special offers, this would also be where they are. They just need to be strategically placed so that if someone were to cut them out of the brochure, it wouldn't then take out essential information from the other panels. So you really have to think about brochures as it's a front and back page, and then you fold it in a very specific way. So thinking about where you place those special offers, particularly if you have people have to cut something out. More and more, we're just seeing discount codes that people enter online. So having to cut them out of a brochure is, is um, becoming a little bit obsolete these days, but it still could happen. So something to think about as you go along. So it is an ADA document, and your book is very specific about how to structure it as such. Now, when you go on Canva or any other kind of design website that's free to use, you'll notice that the particular panels, how they're structured, may not correspond exactly to how it's outlined in your uh, textbook, which is to be expected, right? Um, but you're going to want to make sure you're following the ADA format in your creation of brochure because part of your success in this assignment is to follow this particular recipe. So if I were to go to Canva and just type in brochure, as I've done here, um, you will be exposed to a lot of different templates that you could potentially use for this project. Now, not all of them are going to be great, uh, whether from content or design standpoint. So I want to point out just a few that I found and kind of walk through some design considerations, because although... I, I'm fine with students using templates in their design work. I do want them to be discerning and I want you to be discerning in what type of templates you're using and to actually think about how the template might be even better than, than it is in Canva. You know, maybe just not taking the Canva template and running with it. So from these templates, I've grabbed a few and put them in a document that we can look at together just really quickly to get a sense of what's going well, how it's following the ADA format, or if it's not following the ADA format and what that looks like. So again, we know the panel farthest to the right is your attention, right? In the ADA document, this is where you wanna get attention. So here it's saying, are you ready? It's flu season, time to get vaccinated. So it's making clear out of the gate what this is about and why we need it. I will say 
that seldom would I encourage students to put the actual um, title and information of their brochure at the bottom here and have the design just up here. Mainly because if you think about, I know we're kind of moving away from printed brochures being available, but if you are seeing printed brochures, they're typically in a display case. And in the display case, they're typically folded. And all you can see is the top of the first panel. And if I'm looking at a display case and all I see is the top of the first panel and it's all design, I have no idea what that brochure is about or whether I should pick it up. So think about how uh, brochures might be displayed in the wild and respond accordingly. So I would recommend actually moving this up to the top of the first panel as opposed to having it here down at the bottom. Just something to think about as you're looking at designs. And so the second panel will continue to develop interest here. So this is where we talk about the benefits of flu vaccines and the approximate number of flu illnesses present, prevented by receiving flu vaccinations during the 2020 season was 8.1 million. And then we have a data visualization here. This is referred to as an icon matrix. So typically if you're using Canva, this will be a data visualization option for you. It'll also be an option if you're using PictoChart and you can do it to build an interesting data visualization. Typically that corresponds directly with your data. I'm not so sure that it does in this case, but in other cases you wanna make sure it corresponds to your data. Um, so this is what they've done to kind of represent people coming in and out of the international airport in one month, um, just to have a comparison to the number of illnesses prevented, right? So grounding that number in a real comparison. And then again, we continue with these data points. Um, this is how this particular brochure is going about generating interest. Uh, by providing real concrete information about, um, you know, illnesses prevented. And here we move on to medical visits prevented. And then over on the fourth panel, which is interest, and we also start to build toward desire here, we have the approximate number of flu hospital hospitalizations prevented. And we continue to have that data. Then as we look at the panel here. So we have one, two, three, four. This is the fifth panel. And this is where we continue to build on the desire. Now, remember in the example, it showed you could use testimonials, biographies, mission statement, all of this. Now in here, the message is coming specifically from the health minister. So we're doing a couple things here. Um, that's building credibility, right? So we go back to the concept of ethos, which we learned about earlier in this course. Um, we have direct testimony from the health minister talking about the importance of getting the flu vaccine and um, how that benefits not only you, but all the people around you um, in the winter season. And then on the last panel, again, panel six is typically reserved for your call to action. This is an ADA document. So the call to action can be, this is where you need to go to get your flu shot. Um, this is what you need, the number you need to call to get more information. Um, this is the website. So typically a call to action, it can be a direct call to action, like call now, or it can provide the resources that people need to take the next steps of action. So that's just one example. I'm being a little bit, you know, critical of certain aspects of the design, but overall it does pretty well following the ADA. I would like to see the data visualizations uh, correspond a little more directly to the numbers that are represented here. Um, but other than that, pretty decent. Then we see this one um, from Greece where we actually have the what the brochure is about at the top of the first panel, which again, if it's in a display case, super important for that to be at the top as opposed to the bottom because that is the first thing that people will see. Um, with this particular example, I will say I have issues with the contrast ratio um, of the text in the background. So you'll notice in this brochure, they're using a design strategy called reverse type. And it's called reverse type because it's atypical of what we might expect. So typically we see in documents that the font or the text is darker than the background. So a lot of times we have black text against a, a white background. But in this case, the text is actually lighter than the background. We have white text against a blue background, which is considered reverse type. 
there's a couple issues with it in this particular brochure. One, the contrast ratio, it is not accessible, meaning that people who are maybe low vision or can't um, find the appropriate contrast when they're looking at it will have trouble reading it. So we always want to make sure our text is accessible and that everyone can access it and read it. Having this contrast, I would really have to squint to, to read this. So you want to avoid those things. Also, just as a general rule of thumb, reverse type is typically to be used sparingly in graphic design. Um, I don't recommend it for anything that has multiple paragraphs of text because even if the contrast is good, like even if the background on this were darker, and the contrast of the text then popped out more, it would still present a little strain to some people's eyes. So that is the feedback I have for this specific brochure. Um, of course, the, the images look great, make me wanna go to Greece. All of that is very fun. This does generate desire, but the text itself is hard to read. And that is not a barrier we want to put in our audience's way. So think about that when you're designing. And then as we go down, um, I just have one more example to look at here. We can look at it in the context of Ada. So this brochure gets it right. They have the text at the top of the first panel so that if the brochure is in display case, you can see immediately what it's about. We have this cute picture of this dog which is giving me a lot of pathos, right? That appeal to emotion, look at those eyes. So we're seeing that in this brochure. Um, then as we go through, um, so this is the attention and then we have interest, right? And then start to build desire and action. So as we look here, this provides more specific details about uh, what adoption means and what that looks like. Um, also provides details on what fostering means and volunteering. So these are the different ways that people can engage with forever homes. They can adopt, they can foster, they can volunteer. And this brochure is really introducing them to those ways that they can be engaged. And then we move on to the desire panel um, where it talks about this. This is not like, it may be better to have maybe have some testimonials here um, maybe a little bit more about the mission statement, but this one here is does have the mission statement. So that's good, right? The mission statement's there. And then it um, shows basically the different things that you could consider if you wanted to donate. So those are some things that you could donate. And then last, we have a call to action. We have that imperative sentence, contact us. And then from here, we have the address, um, the coordinator and the website for further information. So overall, um, not too shabby, but I do want you to be discerning. I don't want you to just pick a template and plunder it wholesale just because it looks good. Think about things like, is the text readable? Um, does the design make sense in terms of this brochure were to be placed in a display case? Um, is it following the ADA format? And if not, how can you edit it to make it more aligned with attention, interest, desire, and action? So those are just some examples to get you thinking about the design of brochures and how to navigate all of the templates that you'll see when you go to make your own brochure. Thank you so much for your attention and happy creating.